We are back with the Sons of Horus Legion Guide, of which I'm joined by... Oh, yeah, Phil, hi. He does this every time. He knows I'm going to introduce him like that. I always but think... yet again, he doesn't know the prompt. I, I always think you're going to say my name and I'm just going to wave. But when you have written that, then it's like, oh, no, you actually want me to say my yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, it's so natural when people do that. Yeah, so he's, we found that many Sons of Horus players are struggling mm. with playing Sons of Horus. Phil's been a Sons of Horus player for... Since I started. Since I've known yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I think I've been playing Heresy for like nine or ten years and I've only played Sons of Horus. I've dabbled in mech, but I've literally mainly played Sons of Horus. Yeah. Uh, I've around about 20,000 points, I think, in yeah. Sons of Horus. And it's, um, it's it's something that a lot of people... It might even just be forgetting the hang-ups up, hang of 1.0, but many Sons of Horus players that we know are struggling with. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to go over the book, or like the, the entry in the book, as per we're going to leave Horus to last, and we're going to give our thoughts on the book and have a bit of more of a, maybe a long form discussion on what the hell can you do <laughs> with Sons of Horus? I think that's going to be the, the bulk at the end of it, isn't it? It's like, what do you yeah. do? The Legion trait is Merciless Fighters, basically Sons of Horus in combat, all strength and melee attacks are at minus one against them. Banging. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, which is really Re good. Really, really good. They're not being doubled out by Power Fists or Thunder Hammers. And this is the key. And this is the key. The, the, is... the Thunder Hammers and Power Fists not doubling you out. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it doesn't matter so much against the, the axes. It doesn't matter so much against other things. It's the doubling out that it stops. I think it's so. so good. It also makes tacticals really kind of a hybrid combat unit. Because with, with uh, chain bayonets, they're mm. wounding on threes with shred. And if somebody else is trying to attack your back, it's either, if they've got chain bayonets, it's four with shred. Or if they haven't, it's fives. Well, it just means a lot of the time, your very basic unit is going to reliably punk another basic yeah, unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not loads other than that to say about that bit of the Legion trait. It'll come in as we go through the units in the book. Yeah, I mean, the only other thing it does is it adds plus three additional hits for if you ran with a vehicle. Mm. Now... Or two D6 plus three for a super heavy. For a super heavy. But they're like a thousand points each now. Yeah, and I just don't know... I would never want to ram with a vehicle for something that does like strength seven, AP dash. I'd want to shoot. Well, it's when you have... Have you seen the Horde of Rhinos list that someone put out in the last week? No, the, no. In 3,000 points, you can basically fill every slot in the Force Org with a minimum squad. Right, okay. And then you have a Rhino on every single squad. Oh, my God. So it's like 16, 17 Rhinos. It's, I don't know how good that would be. I don't think, actually, that would be very good. No. But, but just ramming thing. everything with yeah. that. So I'll but, try it one day, see what happens. I only have five it, Rhinos, it, though. It's worthwhile doing. We, well, yeah, you can just pay another... Well, you've got five rhinos, so five 12 rhinos. times, what is it, what, 40 quid? 40 quid, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's going to take yeah, a Yeah, just get that time. 480 quid trial of, <laughs> of rhinos <laughs> ramming people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's worth money well money well spent. <laughs> then you get the Warner Masters Armoury. Dark Emma said, oh, you've got a, a character. And the War Masters own. I imagine by the fact that I've never seen you use that character, it's not great. And the Warmaster's own, so you get Warlord traits. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll obviously get to them as we come to them. The advanced reaction. Do you want to go through it? So... While I'm going to look up whether you stay in base contact after you're ramming. <laughs> the advanced reaction. So I'm just going to read it verbatim off this first. This advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's shooting phase when any enemy unit declares a shooting attack targeting a friendly unit under the reactive player's control composed entirely of models with the Legion of Starty Sons of Horror's special rule that is within 12 inches of the attacking unit. That is a mouthful without any commas or oh my, all, There's so many rules in these books that are yeah. just so wordy. It's so, it's so long that... Before the enemy unit resolves any to hit rolls, the reacting unit may make a shooting attack, targeting the unit that triggered this reaction, increasing its ballistic skill by one for the duration of the reaction. Once the shooting attack is resolved and all casualties caused by it removed from play, the enemy unit may resolve its own shooting attack. 
though models removed as casualties due to this reaction may still attack. That is a long, long rule. I think all of them are about that length. It's yeah. just a bit ridiculous. But the, this, so this rule plays off your old plus one BS. At 12 inches. At 12 inches. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what the plus one BS is about. That's why it's the shooting buff rather than a combat buff yeah, when yeah. your Legion trait is. A very combat orientated one, yeah. Yeah. We've been playing this as, we'll say what we've been doing in most games. Okay. So plus one BS and it's the unit that is targeted by the shooting attack that gets to do the reaction. Yeah. And that makes it slightly underwhelming. It's just plus one BS. And I say just plus one BS, that, because that can now be done by a tech marine for about 55 points. 70 points. Is it 70 points? It is 70 points. Well, it's for 70 points. The plus one BS is sort of by the by. It's like Iron Havoc's having BS5. It's sort of by the by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because anyone can just do that. You so, realised. reading this, nowhere does it say that the unit that's being targeted is the one that has to do the reaction. It has to do the death dealer. The only stipulation in the rule is that if, you're t if a unit is targeted within 12 inches, you then get to react with death dealer. But it doesn't actually say that the unit that was targeted within 12 inches is the one that has to do this reaction. Yeah. Which is really different to what Max has just brought up now to the return fire. Because if you just read that for Yeah, us. so return fire, it's the reacting unit may make a shooting attack, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty standard worded in the actual return fire bit, like what you'd expect. But in the reactions in the shooting phase, it specifies the... Targeted the targeted unit. unit may make a return fire or evade. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't say like return fire, evade or advanced reaction in shooting phase. In specifically shooting phase, the targeted unit may return fire or evade. Yeah. So logically then, you can do it with any unit within 12, which is what you've done in our last game yeah, when yeah. we played 2,000 points. No, I, I used another unit. You targeted no, the yeah, unit. Yeah, no, that's what, yeah, right. that, so that's what you've done in our game where you've done your drop pod list. Yeah, yeah. That then makes it an actual useful reaction on par with reactions, say, like of charging in the movement phase. Or charging, charging in the shoot, the shoot phase. phase. Yeah, it makes it on par with those reactions. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, if we are wrong, someone point it out in the comments. Like, I imagine James is going to be screaming at his screen as he watches this. From what we can see, that is how it's done. There's nothing... And it makes it really useful. Yeah. It looks like you, if a unit is targeted within 12, you can have like a, a last cannon squad at the other end of the field, as long as they're in range, go, right, well, they're going to do Death Dealer. But you might this really interesting. No, name. no, the, oh, so it's the friend, the, the, friend the targeted unit, unit is within 12 time. inches. Nothing else has to be within 12 inches. Right, so, yeah, these, yeah. I, I can't see on face value where the floor is in that. We have looked at the reaction section in the rule book. Mm -hmm. And it also logically makes sense that that is line, though models removed as casualties due to reactions may still attack. Having it as being another unit, yeah. you can react with that the unit yeah. before they fire and then react after. So you could do death dealer with one unit and return fire with another unit if you had enough react, if you were allowed to do two reactions in the shooting phase. Which a lot of the warlord traits let you do. Yeah, yeah. Because you're trying to take in so much information yeah, at the yeah, start yeah. of the game. That's how we looked at it, as if it was just a return fire and rubbish. Yeah, yeah. It, I don't know, it makes sense. Let us know. We will move on from this. We think it's really good doing that. Like, Laz Cannon mates over the other side of the battlefield yeah. get to shoot. And scream at us in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Yeah. So, Warlord traits. So, I know which one you tend to go for, but do you want to just... I'm not reading everyone all Everyone can read the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you got you've got two traitor and one loyalist. No, you've got one traitor, one loyalist, and a nothing. Oh yeah, it's a nothing. I didn't realise that. I thought that was a traitor one as well. Uh, so you've got uh, chosen by dark gods. Basically, you can declare this at the beginning of the turn. I think it is mm. on a two to five. You get plus one strength and toughness. On a six, you get plus one strength and toughness and a wound back. Mm. On a one, you take a wound. So you don't get to increase your wounds above. No, no, you don't get to increase your wounds above. I'm surprised that it only lasts for the turn as well. I would have thought, upon reflection, no, you can't get like a toughness 10, 10, 10 prayer turn. But 
for that drawback when lots of other people just get to have. Yeah. It's a bit swingy uh, with it, obviously, because you, when you want to get that wound back, if you're on one wound, you can guarantee you're going to roll the one. And he'll just pop himself out of existence. Uh, you make an extra reaction during the movement phase with this. You get two reactions in the movement phase. So it makes you more... Well, you can potentially be more offensive with your reactions. Yeah, yeah. Because you can advance reaction up to people. Yeah, you can be really quick up the so board. really helps you with that, like, wanting to get into combat. Yeah. And I, I, or you can evade out of the way of melter guns on your tanks. Exactly. So I, I, I quite like this one. It's not one that I, I've, I've taken it, and I quite like it. The problem is, I forget to roll that D6. I just forget. Because he's a dirty cheater. <laughs> and but No, no. I don't take the buff. I just forget, forget entirely to, 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 forget yeah. entirely to do it. Classic warlord traits. Yeah, yeah. Classic warlord traits. <laughs> so, yeah, Wolf of Luna. So, uh, again, this is another one that I really like. I don't play Loyalist Sons of Horus, so I will never end up taking this. But you get plus one attack. Ugh, Loyalist Sons of Horus. <laughs> Ugh. Luna Wolves. Uh, you get plus one attack Ugh. if you are successfully charged by an enemy unit or you charge... Mm. an enemy unit so in that first turn it's like combat, counter attack or rage one yeah and it stacks with both of them it stacks with them as well don't think you can actually get rid of this by doing a disordered charge because it's just like an extra bonus I I, I don't know yeah. on that one I you've would have ne- you've never played I've never played it because, played played it because I don't I play traitor but if somebody does you know play loyalist how have you interpreted that how have you ran with it because I I don't know and also will it. never get to know because it doesn't play. <laughs> he will never look it up because it will never come into his life <laughs> I do have Logan part painted there's a reason you've got like 14,000 points of Sons of Horus and Logan's only part painted yeah it's because I'll never use it <laughs> realistically that's <laughs> it's fully the case and uh, again and who did the part painting of it uh Pete Reese. Yeah, <laughs> Not me. Exactly. <laughs> um, you get an extra reaction in the assault phase. So he's like, they're much more defensive. He's like survivors of Istvan. Yeah, yeah. Style, like holding the line and stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, if you've got, if someone charges you and you've got counter attack on your unit and you get in this as well, I'd be pretty scared about that. Yeah. So Reavers have got counter attack. Ah. So Reavers is what, two attacks base, so they've got five attacks with their chain axes if you charge them. So that would be, you know, that would be really good as a bait. And you're not doubling them out because they're not. sons of whore. Exactly. We'll, we'll do this when we get to Reavers. You know, another, another good thing as well, with having the two things where in the assault phase, a lot of people go, oh, Overwatch, because Overwatch is a full ballistic skill. But mm. with this, uh, is it bracing? I can't remember. Hold the line, bracing. Hold the line. Is it? Yeah, hold the line. You're denying them the extra attack. You're getting your full amount. That would be insane. I think that's yeah. really, really good. It's just a shame I'll never use it. Yeah, and then the armor of pride. Now, this is the one that I take all, pretty much all the time now. So, <laughs> though, everyone go and check out Phil's track record on the channel. Maybe you want to take the other one. <laughs> you might want to take something different. Maybe something out of the rule book. <laughs> it's more too fancy. Hey, you say something out of the rule book. I prefer the ones out of the rule book. Oh, oh, the you, one out you of the would, than, wouldn't you? Than the Iron Warriors one. So, this one, when your warlord gets to zero wounds, if you pass a leadership test, so you're looking at leadership nine, leadership ten. So you're fairly confident. Ten for your yeah, ten for yeah. your praetor. You come back and D three wounds, but sorry, come back's the wrong phrase. Yeah, you're just not removed from the board. So you just carry on doing what you're doing. Mm. So if you were doing a charge and you died to Overwatch, yeah, you just if you pass your leadership test, you get your D three wounds, you're back in. You're back in the game. Back in the game. So wounds still spill through in this, right? So if I have. 10 power fist attacks because you're not being doubled out by power fist mm. and you I kill I do the three wounds so there's seven wounds left yeah, yeah. the other seven will still go on to your praetor so then wait so if the squad so doesn't it, it satisfy you because you're not removed from play to, yeah. it still goes on to it, the praetor in other warlord traits it does like that yeah yeah in, so I'd I mean, imagine Ralderon that Ralderon or something or one of the blood angels ones right okay I would imagine that because you're not removed from play, yeah, and it's like a step that it's just it's just like a trigger step, which is quite new to two point There's quite a lot yeah. of those, but it's that interject the way that normal things happen. Yeah, if you have not got a squad to satisfy all those attacks, 
then your your prey tool yeah, will come, come back, back and it will keep on going back on your prey tool. Um, one thing though, when he dies the first time, because he's not removed, you don't get Slay the Warlord. No, 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 you, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I, I thought you would. There's another rule later on where it works different. Right, okay. Um, so reactions here, you get two reactions in the shooting phase. So good. That really so good. helps you with your death dealer. Yeah, so the way we're looking at death dealer is like... This is the only Legion review that I can properly chip in on, you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> you play so often. Yeah. Um, so imagine that, death dealer goes off, they shoot before that unit attacks the one within 12, then you return fire with the unit that's yeah. been targeted. You could wipe out something just off the board completely. Yeah. Uh, and you could you could bait that. You know, you could be like, oh, I've got this unit that's got like a load of power weapons, power fish, melt of bombs, whatever. You want to get yeah. rid of it, and then you go, right, well, okay, this unit's going to do it, and then that unit's going to do it as well. So I, I quite like that warlord trait. Mm. Uh, it also kept uh, my Praetor alive and one wound fighting Mortarian for like three turns. Right. So I'm quite happy on that one. Now we're going to Rites of War. And you've got the Black Raven Long March still. Do you want to start with the Long March and then we'll go to Black Raven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the Long March is completely different from 1.0. My army was firmly based around the Long March. Well, I don't think... It just wasn't based around Black Raven. It just, <laughs> yeah. it just wasn't based around... Um, so with this here... And the Long March was just so good. So for anyone that doesn't know, there wasn't loads of Relentless in 1.0. No. And the Long March gave Relentless to every what every Sons of Horus unit in their deployment zone. Yeah. It gave them Relentless. And re-rolling ones to hit on the first, the first turn. turn. So the idea was that you were supposed to move up the field. But, but no, what, one did. no one did. All they did was move them around where they needed to get a better line of sight. So it, you know, it, did, it did kind of need changing. Um, so this one here, units made up entirely of models with Legion we'll of Astartes. We'll just Astartes. summarise it. All right, Plus okay, one then. movement on everything with Legion of Astartes. There's um, infantry or Dreadnought. Oh, so you, you don't get it on your you don't get it on your vehicles? No. So you don't get it on bikes, javelins, land speeders, vehicles, but you get it on Dreadnought. I suppose it's the long march, it's not yeah, the long, long drive. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like you're going down to Devon or something like that, isn't it? The long drive. <laughs> That's such a British one. That's such a British one to do. Like going down to Devon specifically. <laughs> um that is really, really good. I think that bonus, I think, is really good. It, you can't run, oh, you but can you get pl plus one to your movement. Right. And then it says, gain one. <laughs> this one, gaining no bonus to charge distance rolls, even if conducted during a movement phase. I, I don't... So it's just plus one basic movement. Yeah. I'm quite good on, like, especially on, you could, like, I suppose, long march sniper vets. Like, uh, just rapier carriages. Dreadnought for oh. movement nine. Yeah. You can't do it in rapier carriages, they're artillery. They're no, artillery, yeah. yeah. But, like, um, Tartarus well, yeah, Terminator's gets you that movement plus one eight, plus. yeah, Re Reaver's movement eight, your Tactical's movement eight, Dreadnought's movement nine. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it makes It them... gets you that bit closer to the charge anyway. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. makes that charge that bit easier. So, Cataphract Terminator squads, Tartarus Terminator squads, and Justarian can be chosen as non compulsory troops. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, I think I think that's that's quite decent. You can just have like a sea of terminators, just your two units. And they all get and all those terminator types gain outflank. Which is yeah. which is really though I say that's really good. It's I can't think of a terminator unit I'd want to outflank with. Ah, well, read the limitations and you'll see why that becomes really good. Right. So must be traitor allegiance. Yep. And May not include any models with a heavy subtype unless they enter play from reserve. That's really odd. So that's really odd. You're just there in and you cataphracty. Have to out. Have to out. Well, they go or into reserve strike, or on. deep strike, but they have to stay off the board. So you have an ability then just to get them where you want. I suppose them it's because be. they're not keeping up with the long march, but then why are they getting the plus one movement? Don't know. It's but interestingly, Tartarus Terminators aren't heavy. They don't have the heavy subtype. Oh, so they can start on so the board. So they can start on the board. I get that. Yeah, I so you that. could have your Tartarus Terminators on the board, putting a load of pressure on, and then turn two or turn three. Well, they don't have three up in vulnerable shields, Bill. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them out. Let's, let's, do, let's not so get So you into don't them. rate this right of war, do you? Really? Like, I know I... the plus one movement is quite good. Do you know what? 
But I'm 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 I'm, wa- to I'm warm into it. The problem is I have nothing. You don't have all. The I don't have all the. I don't have all the Terminators. Like I've got like ten Cataphracti. Uh, I've got now. They're going to be outflanking. They're going to be outflanking. Really want to do twenty either. just there in, which are outflanking. I have got ten Tartarus, but they've all got um, lightning claws. Right, which you don't want to run up the board. Which I don't want to run up the board. Um, so I am warm into this. I do think that if you have a big, a couple of big squads of Tartarus Terminators that have got some way of putting ranged firepower out and ranged pressure on people, yeah, that you, this would be really, really good. Uh, I, I'm really interested to play this and I'm going to be investing it in to be able to do this. Because that, for some reason, doesn't fit into your 14,000 points. No. It's all super heavy, I imagine. I say, I imagine I know exactly what you've got. <laughs> right. So then, the Black Reaving, because I know this is one that you take a lot now, or yeah. have been doing. And models with Legion of Starty Sons of Horus taking this detachment gain Rage 2 when they successfully charge an enemy unit that is already locked in combat with one or more units or an enemy unit that is the target of at least one other charge in the same charge subphase. So you don't actually have to order your charges to get them in in a certain order. It's just got to be contacted by two units in the same charge subphase. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, you don't even have to... You don't even have to do that. You, you just don't have even to... have to get them in. Yeah, you can just like go for the 12 inch charge that you know isn't going to get in. And then the other unit can just go in and get rage. Yeah. So it only so has to be a target of it. Oh, my heavy support squad 12 inches away is going <laughs> to try and charge. This is a change to... This isn't very much change from 1.0. It's very similar. The only good thing is that they've changed the way that the rage comes off. So it's so, done in your turn, which I yeah. think is brilliant. And just seeing that, that it's a target. So what you mean is it, because previously it had to be locked in combat from a previous turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which made it near unusable. Now you can pull it off in your own turn and in one turn. Yeah. And so reaver attack squads can be taken as troop choices. Um, when they're tra- taken as troops, they gain the line subtype. And this is one of the near the only traitor ones that gain yeah. line to the unit they get. It's very rare that anything gets line. In a traitor. In, in, in a traitor, I think. Yeah. And reaver attack squads are specific. Reaver assault squads. Aggressor. Aggressor. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> don't gain this because it specifies reaver attack squads. Why, sadly. Didn't, why in that PDF they didn't just put like a... Reaver assault squad hyphen. Reaver assault squads can now take jetpacks for five point per model mm-hmm. I think that would have been a lot cleaner than what they've done well, they've by separate to, amount throughout all these books they've liked to split down yeah 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 which and just staring can be chosen as detachment and gain deep strike so let's go on to limitations <laughs> and I'm just gonna just so we can get it all out so you've got to use a master of signal oh uh, you know what I don't in addition to a prayer to or other characters that can use a right of war. Right. And it's got to have m- more faster. I was just like... More? Um, more. Because I was, I was trying to look whether it was equal to or more. No, it's well, more fast, fast than heavy. Range. So it means you've got to have... If you want... You can only have a maximum of two heavies, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and you've got to use three fast to get... Uh, yeah. So... The fast, the fast choices though. In, That's not too bad. Just take any, some good fast choices. Well, there's quite a lot of them now. I'm thinking. I've not mm-hmm. played with a lot of them. Just take three Xiphons. It's like two hundred points. <laughs> three Xiphons. Three hundred and seventy-five points. So you're not far off yet. Um, you know, I think there's quite a lot of really good fast choices. You've got. Yeah, like, they've really uh, bulked out that, that section. That should, of the book. And it's not like what well, it's like. Oh. And seekers are awesome. We yeah. Know seekers so you are awesome. could take three units of seekers, and then you got three two heavy support, or you could yeah. you know take something that's not. Yeah. Just seekers all the now, time. Now, the downside to this, really, the big one, must take a mastery signals. And why is that a downside, you might ask? <laughs> why is that a downside? Well, just there and get deep strike. So you want into deep strike them, maybe. And if you do want to deep strike them, you've got a mastery signals. So you get to, is it re-roll reserves with the mastery so signals? So with mastery signals, you get to re-roll reserves. But... Go on. You also got a Nuncio Vox, an Augury Scanner, and a Cogni Signum. And a Vox Disruptor Array. And a Vox Disruptor Array. Yeah, so the, the bot is... it's a You become a disordered deep strike on a, four, on a one, two, three, rather than just a one. Yeah. So if you bring the, if you bring them in singly... So you they, can't... 
you can't deep strike units singly. They all come in. They the all come in at the same time. So, so you've got you... basically, if you have one unit of just airing, that's like optimal, because they won't get the disordered charge. A disord, yeah, Dis the, not disordered charge. Disordered, disordered deep, deep strike. strike. But and they'll benefit from that sort of signals. Yeah. But if you want to do multiple squads deep strike, if you want to do like five, you know, use all your uh, elite choices and also using your retinue. So you yeah. could have five units of just staring and just going. I'm not making boom, my, boom, I'm boom. not making my teleport noise again. You you could end up with one where it needs to be. That was still be. crashing and burning that last one. <laughs> one unit where you want it to be, and then the rest could just be scattered around the entire Yeah, because half of them on average are uh, gonna be placed by this guy. Yeah, exactly. So it really works at odds with the right of war. I think the the deep striking just there is really good. Yeah. Really it's not brilliant. But they, now that things can charge out a deep strike, it's worth the it's, it's worth, worth a punt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but then have it, you know, trying to take a couple of them to try and put pressure on, you're yeah. instantly going to ask for trouble there. So I think yeah. it's a, it's it's really at odds of itself a little bit. Uh, but if you could turn off that master of signals disruptor array, and I'm not even saying just for you, you could just be like, it could have been like on off switch like a jump pack because jump packs are activated. Are like on -off switch. Yeah, yeah. So it could have been like, right, this turn until the start of your next turn, the box disruptor arrays off. Yeah. And if you so if you put if you want to deep strike multiple, you put him in a land raider or whatever transport. Because then he's off the board and none of his rules take effect. But then none of his rules take effect. Which means that you're wasting 95 points for a model. And I can't express how good a master of signal is putting him in a unit of uh a heavy weapon support bit, yeah. uh, unit because he has the cognitive signal which gives them night fighting so they ignore all the negatives night vision fight. sorry they just ignore all the negatives of night fighting yeah. so uh, and people can't use shrouded against them uh, so really really so good yeah really good model really aggressive unit it looks on paper like he's a defensive unit but i think he's like a really aggressive buff character but yeah. buff character well i so i i do like this right of war like the second unit in, first unit in. Oh. The good. The master of signal. I just take a blob of just staring. I'm not just like a little eensy beans. Not unit. five, like ten. Yeah. Just go in. But, um, what is the maximum size of some twelve. Just staring? Twelve. Take twelve just staring. Prayer to bam. Just a bit of a tidbit. Just staring's maximum was twelve initially, and we know this because we spoke to Alan Bly when he initially did this. Yeah. Because that was the maximum number you could put in a uh, Spartan, Spartan with a character with well. a character in power armor. But then he was like, "Well, you can't take a Spartan with just staring." You know what? He went, "Can you not?" And he completely missed out. But it seems to be missed out for addition, addition, addition. <laughs> Never been added in. So fun little uh, tidbit. fact, a little tidbit there. So. The Armoury of the Sons of Horus. You've got the Kasoran... Ka Kasoran! Yes! Kasor so Kasoran Paris. I took a shot in the dark and I said it right. This not here. the Karnosan... Or whatever. It gun. is Chthonian. I'm just going to call it the Chthonian Power Axe because I, can I, can't, I can't get my head around that word at all. I said Kasoran. Ka ka Kasoran. 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 Right, anyway. Kasoran. <laughs> it's a strength user AP3... Uh, power axe which is breaching five specialist weapon and you can exchange any power weapon for this at no additional cost so basically it's a power sword which rends on a five rather than a six and is a specialist weapon so you're not getting two attacks yeah or plus one attack for yeah two close combat weapons i i like i don't think it's overwhelmingly good for, for me the only thing that I, I, I don't... I, I've flip-flopped on this weapon so many times, by the way. So yeah. many times. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's a specialist weapon. Yeah, well, this is what I'm just looking up now. Whether or not, say, I don't know, Death Guard's power scythe is a good comparison. Because that also runs on a five. That's a two-handed weapon, though. But you get reaping blow on it. Which yeah, the which so attack. they get the extra attack, which yeah. is essentially two close combat weapons. So what? Go on. What do you think about it? And I'll look this up. So at first, I didn't really like this. I thought it was a really, really poor 
uh, weapon. Uh, actually, I think the breaching on a, on a five or a six is actually pretty decent. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it's a specialist weapon. And another thing that's irks so me... denying the plus one attack. Denying the plus one attack. A, a Death Guard Power Scythe. Oh, he's rending six, but he's plus two strength, reaping blow one. So, the, so it's, it's worse rending than that is. The only other thing I don't I dislike about this, and I'm not being super negative about it, and this is just my own idiosyncrasies, is that it's an axe, but it doesn't get any plus to the strength. Right, okay. So, like, chain axes get plus one to strength, power axes get plus one to strength, you know, axes seem to add two strength, where mm. this one doesn't. They're, but I do get that if, you know, if this had plus anything to strength, you'd probably have to pay some points for it. Maybe. So it, it's, you pay five points for a ph phalax blade. Oh, my God, and they're amazing. And that's plus one strength, rending four plus, dual exact one. And that is specialist weapon, but... You get two. Do you? Oh, so you get two specialist weapons with that. So for five points extra, you can get plus one strength, rending four instead of rending five, and duelist edge one. Yeah. So it, you know, it just doesn't stack up, I don't think. It's not that this is particularly terrible. It's better than a power sword, power sword possibly. You're losing the one attack. So the... The difference is with this. Statistic, also, the fact is, it's it, rending, rending four up, which means it's ignoring the the wound roll. Oh, and this is only breaching. And this is breaching, which so, means you still need to be able to wound the model. Yeah. So it, it's not bad. I think it's quite good, but mm. I think it doesn't stack up to other legions' unique armory stuff, except for the Night Lord's chain blade. Nostram the Nostaran chain blade, plus one strength, AP three. I suppose it's AP three all the time. No, it's uh, yeah. I just don't think it stacks up to to other people's yeah. weapons. I think that's the thing that I think it doesn't. When you're looking, because you do compare your legion to everybody else's. I just don't well, think it's it got stacks. Be, since up. we're talking about balance of things, yeah. And one thing I also think is, you as a Sons of Horus player with your legion trait. You don't care whether you're going last because no one's doubling you out anyway. No. It's harder to wound so it's, me. Oh, oh, you do care slightly, but you don't care as much as anyone else. Yeah, yeah. So something that you still went last with wouldn't be that that big of a drawback. No. And I think that and this doesn't... It sort of doesn't mesh with the benefits of your Legion rule. No. And just Aaron come with these as well, which I find really confusing. They always came with power weapons. They always came so with power weapons, so I get that, but... Can you this, still take a power axe on just Aaron? So you can you can swap out power these these axes with a power the, axe. With a power axe. So there's no negative to that. No. Like it's I just find it really weird that on a, 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 But they no no, but they didn't get two plus one attack for two close combat weapons because they were terminators. Yeah. Because they're so they True. Had, they had a, a bolter. Yeah, yeah. I know, but I just find it I Yeah, just, so I like, I agree. I don't think it's overwhelmingly good. I wouldn't particularly be taking them. Like power swords, the plus one attack, I suppose it only... On a two attack model, so like characters and stuff, this is better than a power sword. Yeah. Because, right, so power sword breaching on a six, you're doubling your chances going to a five. So if you have two attacks, getting that plus one attack for two cold combat weapons on a sword is only adding like 33% chance. Or you're taking 33% chance off. Somewhere in there, there's maths. <laughs> Whereas this, the five plus, but I, I, it's better, I think it's better than a sword. I just I just think I'd, I'd still take a fist or a thunder hammer on my sergeant. That, that's the thing. So I think like... Or on my two wound sergeant. Exactly. Like on, on I think it's good and it's better than a sword. It's maybe good, or, just good just, on one wound sergeants that are still... I mean... I've put it. We've played a game where I took three of these and a Reaver squad, yeah. and they looked, they looked really good. Like they, they were really, because you just got the weight of attacks anyway, because yeah. they were getting like four attacks anyway, so yeah. off, off for their three, rage, for their for rage and stuff like that. So this with rage, they're just not overwhelmingly good. Yeah, they just don't stand up. So and when they strike bolters, 
Do you, or do you want to say more on that? Like, no, 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 no. I, I, we can, I, I, I we can, can talk about how the, we can talk about how neutral we are about these all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're just very grey, grey, very grey or beige. <laughs> if I um, die, tell my wife hello. <laughs> uh, beige strike bolters. Um, Eighteen-inch range bolter, rapid fire, strength five, notably. Yeah. Breaching six plus. Yeah. For two points a model. On, on, on veterans, veterans uh, seekers get it for free, and uh, you can get a five plus combi bolt uh, for your uh, characters. Characters. So, uh, weirdly, a Terminator squad can't be upgraded with these. Yeah. So you just there and get it. Yeah. Like spoilers, although we've done that loads. Up to now. No spoilers all the way through the video for what's coming in the video that you can just read. But <laughs> yeah, he's. I think it's weird that you can't go on Terminators. I like them. I would like for the six plus breaching, but whenever you've used them against me and you go, I'm wounding you on threes, I go. Yeah. The Like that's the that's the really good bit, the, the strength, distinctive bit about it. The them. strength five. So for me, these are effective from 18 inches and nine inches. Like, yeah. I don't need to get into the rapid fire range because the wounded on threes, the breaching on sixes, they're really good yeah. no matter what range you're shooting like at. Anyone that played Heresy 1 for a while remembers sniper vets. Yeah. Would you pay two points for a sniper vet? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Is, the, is the word. And these are almost better than sniper vets because they, they wound on threes Some to regular Marines. Vets with these, vets are relentless. So having these, so you could like Hold get them really down close, the hold them down, and then charge and finish off the squad. I Why have you not really good? Vetsville? Do you enjoy losing games? Quite clearly, um, really? I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I would change the crack and bolters. No, I think no, the crack no, and bolters being twenty four inch assault one, breaching four up. I think, I think it's eighteen inch, but either way, for the crack and bolters. Well, the crack and but you but lose either way, the ammo as well. I wouldn't switch the breaching four up to this breaching six up. Definitely. No, no. But uh, but no, I'm I've become a fan of these actually, real big mm. fan. Uh, I've got nothing bad to say about them. I think they're, I think they're really really good. Do you um, know what's weird? We've gone through all of the stuff, and you've been losing our games. We've said before about like, it's people are struggling. It's weird that there's there's no particularly bad things up to now. There's nothing that we don't like up to up to now at least. I, yeah, yeah. Actually, oh, there's one across the page that we're not gonna like. But there's none of these I can. Having read them, are particularly bad. They just, for some reason, not meshing as an army for a lot of people. Yeah, I think so. With with the Bane Strike Bolters, one of the things there is that the Legion rule: you want to get into assault, you want to get and you, into you're going to kill people in your charge range. And, and and any, I'll say, any any player where you you get to pick where you're taking your guys from. If you can see that I've got like a six six charge and I've just nailed three people, you just go, oh, I'm three gone. Well, welcome to your 12 minutes charge. And yeah. I think that's the bad thing there. And as you said, these would be amazing if Terminators could take them. I think yeah, this it, would, you see this all, all the time. On it's all a hold up from when Sons of Horus were a close range shooting legion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, on to Dark Emissary, which is the, this is a different section, Phil. It's the, oh, this is the Dark Emissary section. Of the Legion of Stardust rule. <laughs> like, do you know, because it's broken down like Merciless Fighters, yeah. Armory, Warlord. Yeah, this is the Dark Emissary section, and surprisingly, it includes a Dark Emissary. Ooh. 25 points. On top of the base cost of a console. Centurion, yeah, yeah. Centurion, sorry. So, Dark Emissary, you got you take it away for Right. Because so I just failed miserably <laughs> going through this. If you take this uh, Centurion upgrade as your compulsory HQ in an allied detachment, every Sons of Horus model in that allied detachment gets stubborn. So your Sons of Horus are the allies. Yep. And they get stubborn. Yes. So that's good. Yes. If you're the allied detachment. If you're an allied detachment. Can you ally with yourself in this edition? <sighs> so some people say you can, some people say you can't. I will go on the fact that you can't. I've not looked into it so much, in all honesty, because I wouldn't. I would. I have. I've not. <laughs> we, I've not really the recording and look. <laughs> I'm not really that interested. Right. Yeah, because <laughs> if you're playing some, this could be real. This will be really good for say like army, army of dark, dark compliance. compliance. Yeah. This is this is a really good take on army of dark compliance style warfare. But you can't take so that'd be really really good. But militia's not out yet. But but militia, solar auxilia, whatever. 
I couldn't take this model though. No, no, I don't mean on in the. I mean, you have an allied detachment of Sons of Horus. Ah, and then the main and ones, the main militia. ones militia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can't take a jump pack combat bike or scimitar, and he gains the staff of dark authority. All models with the traitor allegiance within six inches increase their leadership to ten when taking morale or pinning. So that does affect the main detachment. Yeah. Army of Dark Compliance, plus one. Yeah. I think that's really so, good. Getting stubborn and then leadership 10. Yeah. Because it would affect his unit as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. In, so he's stubborn leadership 10 for him. Any Sons of Horus within six. Any allies within, within six. six. Yeah, and then he's the actual thing of the staff is plus one strength, AP3, unwieldy murderer strike six. We've already said how unwieldy doesn't matter as much. No. You don't really want this guy in combat. If you are going to use him in combat, give him a different weapon as well. So I And yeah. I, I think this is gonna come into it, not for maybe for Sons of Horus like main players that have Solar Auxilia or Militia when they get released. That is when this is really gonna kick off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's a really good console, but it's gonna be when the other things are released. Yeah. To yeah. give you like Lost in the Damned Armies for I, I, Yeah, I think I think giving you a bit stuff. more of a what the Soup army, where you've got like your main soup. soup, yeah, which yeah. is a mishmash of everything, isn't it? Uh, I actually really like the staff of uh, Dark Authority though, um, because one thing there, it's not a specialist weapon either. Oh, so you can like hit someone with a bolt pistol and that, yeah. So, you know, getting what is it, four or five attacks? The fact that it's unwe unwieldy is sort of a bit of a downer, yeah. But it's you're not, it's like heralds who's going into challenges with the herald, no, you're putting no. something else into the exactly, challenge, exactly, exactly. So one thing it will do is stop you taking Master of the Legion in your allied detachment. That, that, that is one thing well, I think... that sort of ties in with the Army of Dark Compliance, yeah, yeah. where you couldn't take a right of war if you took Army of Dark yeah, Compliance. Yeah, in the second, in the allied detachment. Yeah. I mean... I'll lend you my militia when they come out. <laughs> so we'll go straight on to just staring in the units section. And you've got two units and three special characters. So, or four special characters possibly, I didn't look far enough. So, just staring, 275 points, they've got weapon skill 5, and 3 attacks is their real kicker. Yeah, the... that's, up to, that's up to there, that's really good, that. yeah. really, really good. So, they start with the Kalanosian Power Axe, is what we've, like, as we've said, they start with Bane Strike, as we've said, on a combi bolter. They have Relentless, as per... Just staring retinue so they can be taken as a retinue, like a command squad, yep. and they take up that slot rather than elites. Furious charge one. Same as 1.0. I think it's really good. You yeah. know, just means that you can still keep them with those Pyraxes and the wounded on threes. You know, mm -hmm. the Kasoran. Kasoran? Kasoran Pyraxes? Kasoran. Kasoran? Whatever. Yeah. Uh, they'll wound on threes then. Also makes you a power fist and uh, thunder hammer strength nine, which is really Which good. then you wound Leviathan Dreadnoughts on threes. Yeah. Which is, which is one of the key purposes of Terminators now, is to run into a Dreadnought and, pow and uh, thunder hammer it. Smash it to bits, yeah. So they get chosen warriors so they can all accept challenges. So you can have your big blob of just staring, protecting Horus. Exactly. Or whichever Praetor, character. Praetor, Abaddon, whoever. But they could just be like literally stepping up all the time. And having a four-up invum from Cataphracty is really good. Like, yeah. Primarchs do not just sweep these aside. They, they yeah. have a hard time getting through. Well, they, no, they don't sweep them aside because they also have Stubborn. Stubborn, <laughs> ship 9, yeah. Yeah, so, which is... And Stubborn is king of rules in this edition you ignore other than, other than like rending yeah stubborn is king of rules because it it just ignores so much it ignores the minuses to fear it, it ignores a lot of mine it, it ignores like loads do you prefer of stuff. stubborn in this edition than when everything had fearless basically in the last edition like so i i do because at least they that chance of them failing uh, yeah, I quite like this the way... Is, I, I, this is not just a daring thing. This I is quite like the way Stubborn works thing. because it just means I don't ignore things. I don't like rules where you ignore... They still the test. They still the test. Yeah. So, like, one of the big things previously was, like, things would be ignore, ignore fear or ignore break, mm. uh, break tests. I didn't really like that because it just took a mechanic out of the game and yeah. some people built heavily into that mechanic as well. So Stubborn, for me, is a lot more 
you got a lot more utility and a lot better. Yeah. So Justarian can take Dread Claws or a Proteus Carrier if they've got five or less, but they cannot take a Spartan, as no. you alluded to before. They still can't take a, dis a Spartan. No. Can a normal Terminator unit take a Spartan? Yes. I imagine they can. Yes. You can yeah. point out to me, I think nearly every Terminator squad can take a Spartan. But just staring still. But just still, staring still, still can't. can't take one. Yeah. So if you're taking these in the Black Reaving and you're not going to deep strike them, because you might not want to, you might want to keep them a bit more secure and be a bit... You're using one of your two heavy supports push. on that Spartan. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is big, which is big. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a bit of a downside to them. Because it's one thing that a lot of people don't think about as such a big negative, but it really affects how you build lists when you yeah, have, yeah. when a squad takes a second force org slot to make it viable. viable. Oh, and this is about, yeah. this is why Fulham and Tyrus were better than uh, Tyrants <laughs> in addition. We're not going into that on this. We're not going into that on this. <laughs> how would you kit these out? We don't need to go over all the entries, but how would you kit them out? If I've got the points, everyone gets a thunder hammer. Yeah. If I haven't got the points, everyone gets a power fist. Not if you've got the points, everyone gets a thunder hammer, and if you don't have the points, you remove other things, and everyone still gets a thunder hammer. Nah, well, to be honest, like it's ten of them, it's an extra hundred and fifty points. That's quite a big versus a hundred points for if, everyone with a fist. Yeah, so it's quite. One thing I have been toying with an idea though, and I will be building three guys with two lightning claws, wounding on threes with shred, rending so, sixes. So I think. That will be good in not Black Reaving list. If you're building Black Reaving, you want your Mega Death Star. Mm. If you're taking just staring in Black Reaving, you're either taking a small five-man squad to pick on other units, which it could work. But if you want your, like, killy unit of just staring, I think everyone needs at least Strength 8. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe maybe one model that stays with a Carson and Axe, Carnos and Axe, because he's just in a blative wound. Mm. Other than your ablative wounds, and I do this with my Iron Warriors, everyone needs that fist so that you can squash drakes. <laughs> you can squash... Well, I've not seen many Salamander players coming out of the woodwork. No, the moment, but... I'd squash, <laughs> squash drakes from Edition 1, but, like... Because if you don't, a veteran squad can give you a hard time even. Yeah, yeah. Quite but possibly, if they ever... Because they've got so many wounds. If they can get stubborn on themselves... You can have a hard time with get, veterans, get rid of, yeah, yeah, which definitely. is what Leggy found in one of our games. Is is death, death shroud. Yeah, yeah. Didn't just sweep through my unit because I just like just pass it, and you've not just annihilated the unit. Where is that strength eight? It means that the they're fist go or thunder hammer just wipes through. So I still think that's king. The one in five can change the combi bolter for a heavy weapon, basically. I've said this before, I don't particularly like heavy weapons on Terminator squads. It's, I know they can't run, so when you're sprinting up the board, it, they can plink off a shot. But to pay, like, say, 25 points for a multi It's too expensive. It's too expensive. It makes that when one long guy. doing something else. Yeah, so if you think about that one guy, so the 50 points base, 25 points for a multi -melter, you're going to give him a thunder hammer, you've nearly made him 100 points. Yeah. For a two wound model that can be plinked off, I think it's too expensive. So one me, thing that I would do for shooting wise is if you are in Black Reaving and you deep strike with a, with a small or big unit, everyone gets a combi weapon because it's alpha striking at least. You get you don't get your um, bane strike then, so it's a trade off there. Yeah, but he's, the bane strike comes in, I think more like second turn. And like if you, if you deep strike Fair in enough. and you want to like five man squads going like. Contempt to hunting. Your five man squad comes in, melters him. One thing I've just realised in it. Go on. They can take Volkite charges. Yeah, but that's not like it's a massive no. realisation. That's... But but the thing is. I wouldn't rate but, the Volkite charger because Vol you're making your charge longer. Yeah. You charge but your Volkite charger. You can take that as a minor combi weapon and it doesn't run out. So why, would you, not just take why would you not just take the minor combi weapon all the time? Because you can fire both of them at the same time in this edition. I, I don't know, Phil. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I was just I was just but um solid unit. Yeah, really rate them. Like the, 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 I think there's them two ways to take them in Black Reaving. I wouldn't yeah. take 
multiple units in the back even as we Just said. One. But solid unit, I think in a drop pod assault list, multiple units of just airing or deep striking could be really good. Mm. Like especially big units that can soak up a load of wounds. Yeah, like, getting him in a Charybdis, by the way, because I think Charybdis is the only one that's got a salt vehicle on it in drop pod assault. Really? Charybdis is the only one that's got a salt vehicle. Doesn't that not have the drop pod assault rule, though? It doesn't need the drop pod assault rule because the way that the drop pod assault's worded, it just gets added in and gets to do it. So it doesn't right, need okay. deep strike to actually take part. Oh, it's not got deep strike. It hasn't got deep strike, but it doesn't need deep strike. To How does it come to table then? Because it's a flyer, it just flies no, on. No, you just. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it but just in flies. a normal game. In a normal game, it just flies on. But in drop pod assault, you so actually when don't was losing their minds about it. It actually wasn't that much of a problem. No, because do you remember the meta in one point when everyone was just like convinced the best way to enter the table was by flying on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like nah, but yeah. So that's that's that, that's a little bit tip yeah. there again. So Reaver attack squads on the next page, one hundred and thirty five points. Um, weapon skill five. Mm. Same as a veteran, but worth like pointing out. They've got two wounds, two attacks. He's basically a veteran profile. Reaver Chieftain. With three, three attacks. attacks. Yeah, they come with chain axes, which is fairly good. That plus one strength AP for Shred. I quite like that. Yeah, I like it. I don't think that's bad. They've got Relentless, Chosen Warriors. And Chosen Warriors is good because you can accept challenges, bounce, bounce about challenges. Yeah. Counter attack one, precision shot six plus, precision strikes six plus. So, the two rules that I always forget. Yes. Uh, then they can take a rhino or a drag claw as dedicated. Um, you can have up to 20 in a squad. Mm. Nuncio Vox Vexilla. Like, I'd say the Nuncio Vox is a must have if you're playing long march so that they're not. Affected by night mine, fighting yeah, potentially. Um, it can also help you with deep striking if they do start on the table with black reaving. The uh, so, the legion vexilla would be a good thing as well because they're a primary combat unit. For that well. plus, I, you see, I think it it comes into handy in situations, but a vexilla is half of another dude. Yeah. So I or it's another power weapon. So I can see what you're dropping. If you're scrimping on yeah, point, yeah. maybe if you've got ten points to spare, you throw one on. But not as a standard. If if you've not yeah, if you've got the choice between ten points left and you've got nine guys out of ten with power weapons and no vexilla, I throw ten guys out of ten with power weapons over a vexilla. Okay, cool. Like yeah, personally, yeah. they can take any model can take a power fist. Which is really big. Power fist, power weapon, or channel battle. Yeah, he's like great channel savers just for the lols. <laughs> Hand flamers five points. Now that's that's a bit of a, a left field entry, but I quite like its inclusion. Like it stacks well with the counter the counter attack, attack and bait in a unit and stuff for like art. So yeah, mm. uh, two lightning claws. I think that's just a little bit too expensive for my liking. Yeah, yeah, especially when it's the same. You see, this is the thing with power lightning claws, especially in a two wound unit. It's the same points as a power fist. Yeah. And I can double out someone else's vet with a power fist. I know that you're getting a plus two attacks with it. Mm. So, you know, you are getting loads of attacks. But I again, I'm just not... I think not 10 sold. points... Still not sold. I'm yeah. not sold on random AP2 in combat squads is what I think. Yeah, yeah. He's, I'm much more sold on power axes still. Um, and I know, like, everything else got a buff in this edition. It's just... I don't know, my... Cold Iron Warriors Arithmetic of War, I prefer to lose a few dudes and mash you with a power axe than potentially mash you and not lose some guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just lose the guys, whatever. Bam, you're dead. Uh, one in five can take Flame and Melt Gun, Plasma Gun or Plasma Pistol. I don't like them because you're making your charge longer. There, I said it. So, I, said it. I can see the worth of the Melt Gun now. Because with the reduction in the amount of armoured ceremony, if you are getting close and there's a transport, but you could kill the transport and charge the unit. Yeah, that is true. That is but true. But I 
wouldn't I mean I, I wouldn't be spending you know I take well, if you kill right. unit of thir- I take a unit of 15 I will be take, getting five more to make a but, unit right, of 20 so, so that situation but that's 60 points is what I'm saying I wouldn't so take it for 60 points I'd rather take yeah. more dudes yeah yeah exactly it's and if you're within the range that you arm a terramite range or not arm a terramite you're in melter range, range six inches even if you let's let's be generous you've got a guy four inches away right so you Charge to the tank is four inches. Would you not prefer to charge the tank and wrap the tank and potentially kill the guys inside by wrapping the tank with your 20 guy squad? Or would you prefer to fire your melter guns, you're four inches away, because I'm being generous. I then get out with my squad seven inches and go the opposite way. No, emergency disempart, you get out half of your movement. But you but can I'm go still you're still going the opposite way, yeah. and I have to then Get over the vehicle. You still, you still need to make up. that charge. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really. A I mean, let's say a land raider's four inches wide. You're four inches away. There's an over average charge. With a to minus, just get, ra- if it's get Ver- round, versus get just for the cost of a a melter gun is a power fist. So I'm, for every melter gun you take, I could have just taken a power fist and punched you tank to death. So again. The, it would be 60 points extra onto the unit. Yeah. Like, I just wouldn't I just, I just, would, I just wouldn't do it. One thing that I would probably like is flamers. No. I don't know. No. Like, I like hand flamer for five points. Do you but, know why? Because hand flamers are really cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know, like, there's, there's the, the gaminess which we're talking about and then there's the, the side quest which is hand flamers look really cool. So... Uh, the next piece armor on the, on the and chief and, and a metal bomb on the metal bomb on the chief and you can buy ten points. No, you, I'm just saying you can buy. Oh right, yeah. But artificer armor is like yeah, yeah, definitely take. I it. wouldn't take the metal bomb because I would rather take the power fist on the chief dude and have my four five attacks with yeah. the chief dude and, and going through something that way. Shall we go over the legendary units? So we are going to go over the reaver ag- aggressor squad. So the Reaver Aggressor Squad is an elite's choice for Sons of Horus. And if you notice, we're not looking down at the books because it's it's going to be easy. It's 30 points more expensive for the squad, so 165 points. And it's 8 points extra per additional dude. Yep. So it's 30 points total per additional dude. And for that, they're exactly the same, except they can't take a dedicated transport. And they gain a Legion Warhawk Jump Pack. Which makes the movement 12. 12. Now, would you take them? Right, so we all know jump packs are great. Right? Yeah, yeah. Jump packs are great because you don't have to bother about transports, you just run across the board. Mm-hmm. I think they are very good. I think they're very good in, in Black Reaven. Even though you're already taking Reavers in, in your troops, I think that extra movement is worthwhile. I wouldn't take them in long march because they don't benefit from, from that plus anything. one. Yeah, yeah. So because it's the it's only infantry. I think that's I, th- I think you're right. Like I think getting them the jump packs. I think really really good. They're gonna you know they, they, we've already you get gone. Them there faster and more reliable. Re- Reaver squads are good, and just having the option of the jump packs still mm. makes them really good. Um, I haven't got a bad word. The same. They're exactly the same, but with a jump pack and um, for the extra couple of points. They'll be there. I take them quicker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm so happy I marked every single one of my <laughs> reavers. So, do it. so then the next one is the Reaver Chieftain Squad, which I am going to read off my phone. So these are 125 points. They have the same weapon skill, weapon skill five, same number of wounds, two, leadership eight, same. Now these have Bane Strike Bolters. They've got a Legion standard on the one model, which is a standard bearer. They've all got chain swords rather than chain axes. Mm-hmm. And they've got a boarding shield. So they come with a five up in one, which is tasty. Yeah, yeah. They have got the heavy subtype, so you can't run with them. Yep. Um, they have chieftain retinue, so they're a retinue. Chosen warriors again, king slayers and relentless. They're only actually 22 points a model extra in the squad, so actually less. So you lose the chain axe to a chain sword but gain a, a boarding shield no the 20 points yeah that's what I'm saying so, oh, right, yeah, yeah. so apparently chain axes are worth more than the difference of a boarding shield and chain sword 
So if you take off the chain axe... Oh, it'd be difficult do to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it wouldn't, because they should have it all written out. No, 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 no. What I mean is that, because, like, if you, are you comparing these to Reavers? Is that what you're doing there? Yeah, because it's the same stat line. They yeah. Are, they are a Reaver unit. So you've for also got... Re- for some reason... They don't have counter-attack, and they don't have precision shot and precision strike. Oh, I thought it was actually called a, chief, a Reaver Chieftain unit. No, it's Chieftain unit. Oh, That's I thought it. they were Reaver Chieftains. No. Right, so they can upgrade to a Chain Axe for two points a model. Yep. So then they're the same points as a Reaver. Yeah, yeah. Um, any model can take a power weapon or power fist. Mm-hmm. The entire unit may be given artificer armor. For five for points. Five, which 100% do it. You have to do yeah. that. I mean, to be honest, I think just having these, if you have a look at other people's elite units that have got boarding shields with that two up, five up, they just become... Insanely good. They're terminators it, it, that can sweep. Yeah, they're just really, really good. So, yeah. so they, they're not fists... Tartarus Terminators with shields, but they are five up Terminators that can sweep. Yeah. Essentially. I really like this unit. I, I really mm. like it. They've also got the King... So let's get through it and then we can give our full thoughts. Mm. Which we apparently haven't done in any of these other <laughs> ones. So King Slayers, basically, if they're attacking a unit which includes an independent character, you can re-roll all to hit rolls of a one. Um, if you're engaged in a challenge... Um, with an independent character or Primarch, all failed to hit rolls can be re-rolled. So that's really nice. It's gonna they, these are gonna be guys you get, I think. You have your Praetor in this unit, and when you get into combat, you declare a challenge, not with your Praetor, but it's with one of these. Yeah, yeah. Or if someone else declares a challenge on you, while your Praetor's smashing people about with his Thunder Hammer. One of these guys takes the challenge, tries to absorb it on his shield, and then staves in the guy's skull with his fist. Yeah, he's... And, with the Legion standard, they're scoring. Which I think is really good. Is that scoring or is that not the Herald gives scoring? No, the Legion standard gives scoring and leadership 10. Right, okay. You carry on. So I think that's a really, really good <laughs> bonus. So even though these say in the leadership eight, they're actually leadership ten, as pseudo leadership ten. You, um, you, you are right. Yeah. You are right. And they become scoring. So again, this would be a really good unit. I think more of like your your, your anvil unit. You know, you yeah. could put them into something reliably because the minus one to strength from people that are attacking them. Uh, you know, they're going to be sticking around. They've got a two up, then followed by a five up. Yeah. They've got, they can take, you can take a smattering of power fists, power axes. And they can be 10, like a Legion command squad, you can have 10 of them in the squad. Hmm? So that's 20 wounds that aren't being doubled out yeah. with fists. And I know that's the same for all of your, like, Terminators and stuff. But the fact that they've all got that Chosen Warrior rule and if someone has an independent character in the squad, they essentially have that re-roll the one yeah, yeah. On, on the hits but the, I really like I really like the squad they're, they're pretty cheap as well I think yeah. like for what they do I think they're pretty cheap yeah um, so compared yeah, I really to like a Reaver squad though the which also has Chosen Warriors the difference is that they will all have a two up save but they lose the counter attack and precision stuff yeah so it's it's a bit of a trade off but I think having one of these units in your army is really worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. I I really I really really like them. I yeah. think these some of the exemplary units for me are like hit and miss. This is the one that I looked at. I was like, that's awesome. I, I want to yeah. make that unit. I want that unit. Okay, so we will move on to Malagurst the Twisted, which is the cadre captain of the Sons of Horus, bearer of the eye, the shadowed hand. Equity, the War Master. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so he's movement six because he's so inc- incredibly crippled. Yep. He's weapon skill five, which is actually one down off a Praetor, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Strength, toughness four, two, two wounds. He, oh, he's, why they've made him? He's like one of the senior sons of Horus. They've, like, I'm saying he's one down from a Praetor. Yeah, they've made him a, a, a Centurion. Yeah, Centurion. Yeah, initiative five, three attacks, Centurion. Leadership ten. Prayer to level. Yeah. Save two plus. Standard on a character. He's got a Bane Strike Bolter, Power Sword, uh, Refract Field, Legion Standard. So he gets line from that. No, no. Right, so this is the weird thing. We're just going to... 
The Legion Standard gives you line, but he has line anyway. Oh, but right, he, so he gets it twice. So he gets it twice, so he, he is scoring that... himself. If he joins a unit, he makes that unit scoring. Right. I'm so guessing that's just for, like, uh, continuity issues, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the stand, know. The standard, Maybe they copied and pasted the The standard's the a bit bit. weird because it's also leadership 10. Yeah, but he doesn't he give it to units within six with that legion? Oh standard? yeah, true. Yeah, true. So he's got Master of the Legion, which is so he's a Delegatus Hyrule. Harold Semi. Yeah, in creator. between the both. Um he's got Relentless in, independent character, Adamantium Will four plus. So he's denying psychic powers on a four. Yeah. Which fits, he's a he's yeah. a magic user himself. It will not die five plus. Broken in body. Traitor, bearer of the eye. So bearer of the eye is warlord trait. Do you know what it does, Phil? Oh, yeah, because I can read. Oh, <laughs> All models in a unit joined by Malahurst the twisted gain the lion subtype. And, uh, and, and count, count as a scoring score. unit. Where Malahurst the twisted or any unit he joins controls an objective, the control may not be cancelled or contested by enemy denial units. So it's only an enemy score. So kind of. Scored. Only an enemy scoring unit can contest an objective held by Malahurst the Twisted, and any unit here is joined. In addition, an army of him in as the warlord may make an additional reaction during the opposing player's shooting phase. Um, it's a pretty decent warlord trait, that actually. Sort of, sort of. I. Legion standard, which he's got, gives line. He is line. His warlord trait gives line. So just all to the unit. Everyone so gets he's line. He's got triple line, but all to the one unit. So that's a bit of a weird one. He's sort of, sort of confused. Basically, the only benefit. So he, enemy denial units can't contest. That's that's quite good in the final yeah. turns of the game. The broken in body may not run or sweep in advance. I get it. Now, my problem with it is in combat with him, because it's a personal thing, combat armies, you need to have the hittiest guy around. Yeah, yeah. They don't really... You need the hittiest guy around. And it's very hard if someone has a hittier character than you to take that out. It uses a lot of your close combat potential. So to have a subpar character as your warlord, which is going to be the hittiest slot isn't the best, I would say. I'd say you're always going to pick a Praetor over him. So, th I know you're just staring and lots of other people have chosen Warriors, but which sort of synergizes with him because they can take the challenge instead of him. But I would say you want the Praetor, you're a close combat army, take the Praetor over this because all you're gaining is that scoring. The weird thing... Kill them instead of stop... Stop them scoring. Well, the, the weird thing is, it's like, I mean, I, I like the warlord trait, but just not on him. Do you know what I mean? Because he's, he's already got it twice. Because he's already got it twice. So, like. I, well, I like him being a line character, but he's already got it. And I also like the Legion Standard. He's already <laughs> got it. it. So, I just don't really get. He's a little bit confused. Yeah. A little bit confused. I mean, there's some really good bits in there, some really, like, fluffy rules. Not really good rules, but fluffy rules, like broken in body. Get it, you know, because he is. Uh, Adam has been well four up. I mean, it's like, yeah, you're not doing that to me. Yeah. You know, because that's protecting a squad. It will not die. Yeah. But I, I like the character. I like I like the broken body. I just don't like them. I don't think he stands up to other special characters. No. And even to another creator. No. And I think like they could have done a little bit more with that standard. That You know, he'd make his standard a unique standard. Yeah. They did something different instead yeah. of just doing... Oh, he's got line for his warlord trait. Oh, yeah, but he gives I, it line through that, and he gives it line through this. Yeah, so I don't even think he's a good budget option. No. Like, he's, he used to be really good because he made Reavers troops on his own, so you could take Reavers and in a drop pod assault. And veterans. Oh, was it veterans? Veterans and Reavers, I think. But, so you could take those in a drop pod assault, but now he's lost that. Yeah, yeah. He's got all of these... Weird rules that and he's just not as good as no, and, the, and, and they all overlap, but in a way that you don't want them to overlap. Yeah, if that makes sense. But I do. Yeah, yeah, because it's all line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then onto a baden, the baddest guy around, except for Sigismund, but we won't mention. Him. Oh, fuck Sigismund. <laughs> so then Ezekiel Abaddon, two hundred and fifty points. So I used to be able to say that that was as expensive as a land raider, but that's not true anymore. 
He's weapon skill seven, so one more than everyone else is Praetor. Yep. Ballistic skill five, strength four, toughness four. He's got four wounds, so the same as a cataphracty character. Yep. Five attack, so I believe that's one more than a Praetor, because he's extra angry. Yeah, yeah. He's got a Bane Strike Combi Bolter. He's got a Paragon Blade. Finally. I know. Finally. He's not just got a Power Sword. A Chthonian Power Claw, which is unique to him, so it's not... It's his design. Yeah. And he's the only one with it. Grenade Harness. Legion Cataphractic Terminator Armor. Heavy character. Unique. Do you know... Do, I'm really happy that they've changed his armor to cataphracty. Rather than just there in warplate. Yeah, because in 1.0 he had just there in warplate, which meant he could sweep. Yeah. But you, he was always in just there. He was so already he made, always he, in the cataphracty. So it made no armor. sense. But yeah, yeah um, really good war gear straight off the bat. I think that's really, really good. Some good war so gear So it's the, the, the Paragon Blade needs no explanation. The Bane Strike Combi Bolter has ha already had an explanation, explanation. And the Chthonian Power Claw will get an explanation. <laughs> In the, it's strength times two, AP two, melee unwieldy specialist weapon shred mastercrafted. So it's a power fist that's also a power a lightning claw. Yeah, that's also mastercrafted. That's also mastercrafted. It's it's really good. It's really good. Well, you've got one. You've got a, a weapon to call. So you've got six attacks, by the way. Because the paragon blade is yeah, specialist, it's a specialist weapon. weapon. Mm. So you've got one weapon to call a squad and then you've got one weapon to punk a sergeant like if you just threw him against oh, well to punk a two wound model yeah yeah you've got yeah. one for the two wounds one, one for the, the same yeah wound. yeah so if you went into a tactical squad use the paragon blade and just yeah. sweep through them all if you've got something that's got two wounds go for the Chthonian yeah. power claw He's, so any special rules other than like what's obvious like relentless and bulky he's master of the legion which is worth saying but also maybe sort of obvious He's battle hardened one. So that means awesome. he's not being doubled out till strength eleven. So that means like it's like Perturabo is doubling him out. That's the level we get into. No, no, strength ten will still do it. Minus because one strength for merciless fighter, minus one strength for battle hardened. So strength ten will get you to strength eight. Oh I thought battle hardened was plus one toughness. So I was right. Phil I am yet wrong. again loses on I the am channel. Wrong. I am another wrong. another loss chalked up to the character that he's filled. <laughs> and so yeah, he's essentially toughness five versus people's doubling out attacks. Yep. And minus one to their strength, so it's strength eleven. So we're Primark range until he's doubled out. Or like top tier Primark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than Perturabo. So <laughs> he's also precision strikes four plus. Fearless. Fearless. So, but that means he can't react with evade. No, he can't. Um, he got deep strike natural, which doesn't confer confer to squads that he's in, sadly. But it does mean he can finally deep strike with just in. In if the if he takes him as a retinue, yeah, they get deep strike because of his. It's in the retinue rules. Oh, if right, he has yeah. deep strike and he takes your staring as a retinue, yeah. they then get a deep strike. All oh, right, so that's good. So that don't... wasn't the case in yeah, yeah. So he just it just means that like you can just throw him into a random list. It don't have to be the black reaver. And he's just staring. He's just staring, just deep strike. So he finally seems to be working how he should have been. Yeah. And then he's got the vengeful spirit as his warlord trait. He gains feel no plane four plus during the movement and shooting phase of any time he's deployed by deep strike. Which is really good. Yeah. Because him having battle hardened, me, being toughness five, means that, well, a last cannon isn't doubling him out. Just take it all on him. He's got four up and then a four up before he even gets uh, yeah. taken away. So really good. Yeah. Um, you you, so you've got to deep strike him as well. You've just got to. Yeah, yeah. In addition, and you can do that in long march because he's still in reserve then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You may make an additional reaction during the movement phase, as long as he's not been removed as a casualty. Yeah, he's. I think he's really solid. He's really solid as a character. I don't think he stacks up to the level of Fafnir Ran and Sigismund. Is I think he's like, like in the other rundowns that I've done. I think he stacks up to like definitely Ralderon's level. He's not quite Sigismund and Ran. No. But who is? Well, that's and it, but like as a character, because obviously this is the he is the full moon of the Marnival 
in all in all ways. <laughs> right, no, he's, so he is he's really good, and I I think he's finally in the place that he deserves to be. Two hundred and fifty points, I think, is really fair for him as well. I think that's yeah. a really good points value. It's a bit more. It's a bit more than a price. Wasn't he always two hundred and fifty points in forty k in like I third think, and fourth? I think, I think he, he was. Because I'm sure he's the same price for Landrader in there. So I, that might even be a little throwback. So that his rules just are really, really brilliant in all yeah, fairness. Yeah, especially with the battle hardened your legion rule. Yeah, yeah. He's everything. He's fearless. He's deep strike buff for the feel no pain. He, take him take him <laughs> take, take Abaddon then we've got Gravia Loken who is 175 points he also now has a Paragon Blade notably he's weapon skill 6 so less than Abaddon he's 5 attacks so he's just got as many as attacks as yeah. Abaddon until the fact that he's not got 2 specialist weapons he's got an Iron Halo Artificer Armor Frag and Crack he's got Legion of Sons of Horus Master of Legion Independent Character Born, Born Survivor, Survivor, Loyalist, and Wolf of Luna. And Wolf of Luna is the, the exact same Warlord trait, I believe. That's in the Loyalist, and this is that we went through at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So it's the plus one attack when you charge or are charged. It's, an, it's a solid Warlord trait, it's good. Born Survivor, and this is why you're going to take him over a Praetor or not. The first time in any battle, when he's reduced to zero wounds, you make an immediately leadership test and come back with D3 wounds exactly like that other warlord trait so he's got basically both warlord traits smushed into one yeah i want it's just where he's smushed into one character yeah so he, he's really really good he's he's really good he's approximately the same points i believe as a normal praetor with a paragon blade um i will look that up now he's i don't want to give him a lot of airtime because i hate loyalists in the sons of horror season but he's you know <laughs> The two warlord traits combined into one is very, very good. Yeah. He's, a bud- he's a good budget character, 175 points. I'm just getting to the Praetor bit now, 120 plus the... He's an extra 30 points over a Praetor with a Paragon Blade. Would I take it? With his extra attack, though, as well. Yeah, with his extra attack. I think it's, it's worth 30 well, points. Extra is, is attack, it, double warlord trait, basically. Yeah. I think that's worth it. I think I think he's very good. I'm just trying to compare him in my mind to other special characters that have been through. I, I think he's very good. If you're going to go normal Praetor or Loken... Go Loken. Go Loken if yeah, you play yeah, yeah. Loyalists. So, yeah, he's, he's very good. He's, I, he's no Fafnir Ram. He's, I'm, we, <laughs> I just done, I've just done Imperial Fists One Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, three weeks ago. Like, with you. Yes. And... Everyone is now compared subconsciously <laughs> to, that. to that. So now we'll go on to the big dog himself. Horus Lupercal. Do you well, know what? No, no, said... no. I want his full title. This demands some gravitas. Tim Westwood, the big dog, War Master of the Imperium, the Breaker of Tyrants, the Favoured Son, the Eye of Terror. The Breaker of Tyrants. Yeah, I didn't think that was... Uh, what, what, one of his many names? I didn't think that was his one of his titles previously. Anyway. Yeah, so he, he is in his unascended form. Movement 8, weapon skill 8, which is equal to like the top tier. That's, that's the top that, tier that, primal. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ballistic skill 6, very good. You're hitting on 2s anyway. Strength 7, toughness 7, wound 7. Top tier Primark level on all So what you usually find on the Primarchs at the moment, they're either toughness seven... One of them is seven. One of them seven and one of them is six. So him getting both... uh, Oh, well, all three because his wounds are seven as well. So you usually find that Primark wounds are either six or seven now. So that's really, really good as a stat line. Yeah. Attack six, leadership ten, two up save. He's got the Serpent Scales, Warmaster's Talon, Worldbreaker, a Cogniz Signum. Which is really, really good. Yeah, because he just ignores knife fighting for that squad. Yeah, and plus one ballistic skill. Yep. He, and we'll do Horus Ascended after. He's got Master of War, Master of Weapons, Deep Strike, Traitor, Syrah Horus. So Deep Strike, as you were saying, with Abaddon will confer to yeah, his just yeah, there in, in yeah, any yeah, right war. In the ret- retinue, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So the Warlord trait, Sire of the, the Sons of Horus. And this is not just Sire of the Sons of Horus, this is Sire of everything. All models with the infantry unit type in the same army as Horus Lupercal. So that's allied detachments and primary detachments. Yep. Gain plus one leadership and stubborn. That's awesome. And stubborn. That's awesome. Yeah, he's 
possibly the best warlord trait of the Primarchs, I would say. Yeah. Because it buffs the entire army. The ma he's the master of war, once per battle, when he's the reactive player, so in your opponent's turn. For the duration of the turn, the re reaction allotment of the army is increased by one for in every phase. Amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, so it's... Yes, it is. For that one turn where you really need reactions. All the other Primarchs, their Warlord trait gives plus one to a certain phase or pick a phase and do it the mm. entire battle. This is for that one turn where you go, I am the master of battle and react to an extra one in every phase. Say, like, again, if you were playing a deep strike assault or a drop pod assault army, you get plus one in the reactions for intercept if you've not taken your Argory scanners, which you always I'm should. Sure, I always do, yeah. Yeah, and then you get to an extra reacting return fire, say. Yeah. Or you could do it when someone's chat, like, oh, your big unit's going to charge me, but also I need to react a lot in my shooting phase. So it is very good, it's just not as consistent as the other one. Yeah. And he's got other things that make him incredible. He doesn't, like, oh. do you know, like, that's not a negative for this, it's just know when to use it. Uh, Master of Weapons can never be hit by a melee attack on better than a four, regardless of weapon skill. In addition, during the assault phase, may choose to split his attacks between his weapons, which we'll get into in a sec. Mm -hmm. That's very good, especially in Primarch duels. Yeah. Though then again, is it because so, no, no one's higher than weapon skill eight? That's a very good point. So he can't be hit on better than a four anyway, regardless of weapon skill, because no one's weapon skill is better than eight. Ah, uh, but there might be some that are like, they always Maybe hit when on the a Emperor three comes or the, the Emperor, game. or is there some demons that can do it? We'll see. Yeah, we'll have to see, won't we? And, but that's regardless of weapon skill. So if I get plus one to hit, my four plus goes to a, a three plus anyway. And we're not the serpent good. scales, three two plus armor, three up invulnerable. Amazing. Solid. Yeah, everyone else seems to have a, a, a four, four up, up or a five up. That's really, or a, really good. Like a three up in the turn that you yeah. charge. It doesn't have any. Uh, so with that. With it's his... not a three up re rolling <laughs> like a lot of. Uh, it doesn't have any built in well. mitigation, but I think with a three plus invulnerable, you don't need it as much. Nah, he's very good. So then he's got World Breaker, which is Strength 10, AP 2, Mastercrafted, Brutal 2, Unwieldy. Um, so basically, it's a Strength 10 Thunderhammer with Sunder. You sort of don't need Sunder because he's. Like, against vehicles, you strength 10, she's going to annihilate them with these seven attacks anyway. You're going to be wounding Primarchs on twos, regardless of Primark. He's not going to be doubling out a Baden. No, he's not, actually. <laughs> no, he's not. Yeah, he's, he's, it's a solid weapon. It's as, as good as it needs to be. It's it's basic really? in simplicity, really, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It doesn't have, like, a load of different added rules on it or anything like that. It just... Well, that's what, what I think does. we were saying is, as we took our donut break in between Serpent Scales and World Breaker... That's what we were saying. All of these rules up to now are very simple. And then we'll, we'll finish Warmaster Talon and we'll have a, gan, a, a natter about it. So the Warmaster's Talon, basically he's inbuilt Bolter in there. The Talon is melee, strength user AP2, melee, shred, deflagrate. He's missing out the unwieldy. He's not doubling out things like Terminators. Yeah, yeah. This is your thing to kill one wound models. The deflagrate is going to really help with that. The shred... He's going to make sure those wands don't fail. Yeah. It's not master crafted. Do you know, just on his bolter. Yeah. So like, his bolter, he's strength five, AP three, assault three, twin linked. Yeah. I just, it, it doesn't have like breaching or anything like that on it. It is AP three though. So like Perturabo, his hand cannons, do the entire thing, he's model, he's, he's sat there firing his hand cannon. Yeah. Don't have breaching, mate. All right, okay, fair enough then. I'll take Donned it back. normal bolter. Breaching. Oh, of course it. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> We've just lost across every I think across every guide after the Imperial Fist one. I've lost all of the Imperial Fist players. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope you stick around, or at least I do. Phil might not. So yeah, he's again he's basic, other than deflagrate in its melee. He's very good. He's precision strikes, precision shots, because he's a Primarch, so yeah. he can pick on people with that AP3 shooting. So yeah. it's not as much of a hindrance as you think. You're just not going to be, like, mowing down. Well, the thing sergeants. is, you, you you don't get to say, oh, I'm going to take it on the side, but we're too upset. Actually, no, I'm going to take it around. I'm going to take your Apothecary, if that doesn't have Artificer Armour. Uh, I'm going to take box, your Box. Oh, yeah, you, you know, everyone stuff like the side. Yeah, yeah. Everyone who, who doesn't have Artificer Armour dies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's all solid. 
What are your thoughts on Horus non-ascended? His weapons and his rules are, are, are good. They're not like... There's not a big wow factor. I think... Yeah, there's no, like, the, Sanguinius's plus one weapon skill to Oh, there's nothing the like region. Angron's, like, 13 attacks, whatever he goes up to and stuff like but that. But he, he's consistently solid all the that, way That's through. what I mean. There's no, there's no risk and there's no reward. It just happens all the time. Do you, know, do you know what? It's like we've been saying all the way through the Legion. We're looking at these and going, oh, they're all really good. Now, mm. why doesn't it work? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and it's just because it's working out. Whereas I think Horus, actually, with the three up, with the with all of them, has a high chance of working. The, the other great... Well, one of the things as well, because he now gets Legion of Starties rules as well, he's technically like pseudo-toughness eight in combat. Right, so power fists are wounding him on four on fours. Ooh. Yeah, so like he's got a good chance of he's so he's the Terminator's bane. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's you know he's he's got a good chance of going toe to toe with the Primarchs where they're probably if they're strength six and they don't have anything that increases their strength. Yeah, but a lot of them are strength seven because a lot of them have this thing where they're not with their base weapon yeah. doubling out Terminators. I've noticed. Right, so him being toughness eight or pseudo toughness eight. They're going to be wounding him on fives a lot of the time, which is really big, and probably even hitting him on fives as well. Yeah, a lot because his weapon skill eight. So I think it's it's like no frills, but consistently good. Yeah, so it's like that old banger of a car that you know is just going to turn over every time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I suppose that so non ascended. I think like there's a lot of really good stuff there, uh, but there's nothing like goes wow, wow. 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 Oh, like, there's no, like, Owen Wilson moment. Yeah, yeah, that's... Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. So yeah. then, let's go on to Horus Ascended. Oh, uh, one thing. He's 600 points. Yeah. Um. So just let's just jump onto that first. Yeah. That... A lot of the Primarchs hover around about four, four, Do you know what we did mention? What? As well. He's got seven attacks. Six in his profile, but his talent and will breaker aren't specialists, so he gets seven. He gets seven attacks. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. go on. So he's 600 points. Now he has got a better stat line than every other Primark. But he's nearly 150 points more. More. And I think that just like tips it into a bit too much for him. You think even with what we've said that he's solid everywhere? I think, well, 150 points is a, is a lot. Yeah. 100, it would have been like... Uh, 150 points almost gets you a contemptor. Yeah. And that's the thing, isn't it? For an extra 20... 25 points, you can get a Contemptor. You can get another Primark and a Contemptor. So for Horus's points, you can get three Contemptors and a bit unchange. Yeah. And when you point it out like that, it's like, is he, is, is he worth it there? Potentially. Like, I, I think in this occasion, is he better than, better than three Contemptors? Possibly because of that three-up in Vaughan. They're hitting mm. him on... they hit him on fives. Hit him on fives. I was thinking possibly sixes, but yeah, they're hitting him on fives. They, they're wounding him on threes, not twos, because no. of his toughness eight, pseudo-toughness eight. There's strength strength nine. Strength nine. Nine with the fist. So they're wounding him on threes. He's then hitting back with Worldbreaker, strength ten. Well, to be honest, I wouldn't even go with Worldbreaker against a Contemptor because you, you, you've got your, your talent... With shred, so you need fours just to go through, and then you, every wound that you cause, you've got another wound. Uh, it's the brutal two. I think he's so massive. Okay. Yeah. Like, even, like the the shred relies on getting it through the invun save. The brutal comes before invuns. Mm. So you'd smash him with Worldbreaker. But yeah, he's he's better than three contemptors, I think. Horus ascended, and we'll very quickly go through his stat line. Movement eight, weapon skill eight, same. Ballistic skill six, same. Strength, toughness, eight. So he's got pseudo toughness, nine in combat. Yeah. Eight wounds, six initiative, six attacks, ten leadership, two up save. So essentially you gain a wound, a toughness, and a strength. Yep. It's 400 points, making him a thousand points. If you use his ascended profile, he gains the following special rules. Feel not playing four plus. Oof. Massive. Huge. So it's strength, strength 18 denies his four up, <laughs> feel no pain. Rage 3, a dark fate, the power of chaos eternal and spreading corruption. So, do you know what these do? Yes! <laughs> and then proceeds not to go into it. So, <laughs> Which one would you like to do first? Obviously the first one. <laughs> Are you going to sit there and read it now? No. Go on then, what does it do? 
Uh, when he goes to zero wounds, yeah, uh, he then goes back into reserve, yeah, uh, and he comes back onto the table in your following turn. Yeah, uh, you still get the warlord kill for him, and you can get the warlord kill again for him. Really, and he he only comes back on a single wound. He only comes back on a single wound. So basically, don't lose. The, this is, I would say that's more of a negative than it is a positive. I don't think it's a positive in any way. Because coming back on a single wound isn't enough. He gets nailed with a... He comes in, I intercept with my last cannon squad, he gets nailed. Dead. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't think, you know, it sounds like... It'll be, if he came back on D6 wounds... Yeah. And if you roll a one, you roll a one, or boo-hoo, that's the, you know, it's the way it goes. But if you came back in D6, I think that would be a lot better. But one mm. wound, so you can get, like, what is it, like, four victory points for killing him? And he can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. And he does it only once as well. So then, the power of Chaos Eternal, though he, he is going to... Oh, no, no, sorry. It can, be, it can be triggered a second time if Horus Ascender returns to play and is removed as a casualty again. So you yeah. can get... So he comes in... You kill him, you get your Warlord kill and your Primark kill. He comes off the board, he comes back in for a deep strike, because that's what he has. You kill him with the one wound, he goes back off again, he comes back on again, and you get the one wound. No, it's the first time in any battle he loses his last wound. And maybe so. triggered a second time if Horus Ascender returns to play and is removed as a casualty again. Last line. Don't them two conflict then? Yes, really badly. Right, and he, we'll move on from that. So the power of Chaos Eternal... Once per battle, at the start of any assault phase, you can increase your strength and toughness to 10 for the duration of the assault phase. Also, you ignore unwieldy on Worldbreaker. Once it ends, he automatically suffers the perils of the warp, but any wounds must be allocated to friendly models in the same unit as Horus before they are allocated to Horus. So that's not that final bit makes the perils of the warp, warp not as bad. So because it's, you just allocate it to your mooks. So with Perils of the Warp, you allocate it to the unit anyway. You don't you allocate it to the character or to the unit. You don't have to go oh, to the really? character. Yeah, you don't have to go to the character straight away. But it's, it's still... Uh, do you know that's not that much of a downside? Strength, toughness, 10. That's sort of weird because why would I use World Breaker if I've already got tough... I suppose for the Brutal 2, but... I've and then already, you're attacking it Initiative 6. But yeah, yeah, but on, I, the Talon would be strength 10 then. Yeah. With Shred and Deflagrate. I don't... I don't you really... go for that oh, because of... You'd maybe go for World Breaker because of Brutal, but then your Deflag's coming in, so maybe Brutal uh, isn't as, as necessary. I don't I don't know that. But, like, being, I think for me that... Are we going to... Unless this last one is really incredibly good, I don't think that's so incredible. No. Is the Unwieldy going... Or ignoring Unwieldy is very good. Toughness 10... It's good, but when are you getting charged by four dreadnoughts all at the same time? Like because he, he mooks a dreadnought as we've seen, and that's the that's the only real thing that he needs that toughness yeah. ten for. Spreading corruption. All models in a unit made up entirely of units with infantry, character, or dreadnought may be corrupted for twenty five points. They gain the corrupted subtype. Apothecary carriers and tech marines must be upgraded separately. Um, for apothecary detachments, tech marines, covenants, and other sif basically for things bought as a single force org uh, and then separated and divided um, the upgrade is bought once for the entire set of models so it's Dreadnought Talon no, I don't th I don't think you do it in that way I think that you would oh, I, you no no buy it's it separated divided or attached to other units so, but with it going models that are attached to units such as apothecaries or tech marines must be graded separately I think your dreadnoughts would still get 25 points per model right okay. I know how you've read that but I would play it that way right okay so what do you think of that one Phil corrupted subtype it basically gives the old demon instability and gives them a 5 up in vulnerable so five up in vulnerable and demonic instability. Does that come base with uh, like pseudo fearless? Yes. But you're already leadership plus one and stubborn for Horus being on the table. Yes. So that's not that big of a thing. And you're just losing wounds. Yeah, and uh, five up in one. That's good. Which is ignored by like force weapons, which is not a massive not amount, massive part but of the game. it's still there. But twenty five points. I think on some units it'd be really good. It's I think not, it'd be... it just take a turn. You just airing, don't need it. 
chieftains don't need it. The only things that need it, really, are your reavers. Are your bog standard normal troops? <sighs> Whack them in cover. Six up. You know what I mean, though? Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. For 25 points... I don't um, think That it's... being what we... As we've come down to... Other than... He's got Fear No Pain Rage. These are very good. They're not worth 400 points. Spreading Corruption is further points. Yep. Other than in that one phase, Horus Ascended, if the Emperor enters the game, the like Emperor has joined the game, Horus Ascended. <laughs> Other than that, I'm going to say Horus Ascended is is not worth he's worth maybe 50 points it's not worth you it's not worth you an extra 400 points i mean the stat line is really good but, it, I just, but he's, I, he's already just, good at, like the strength eight well i'm using world breaker at strength 10 toughness eight it don't come into it that much dreadnought fish wound him on a four rather than a rather than a three primarchs with weapons will wound him on a two anyway because mm -hmm. most Primark weapons is like Ferris, if it's, if it's not se if it's not seven, which are already wounded on a on a five because it'd be pseudo mm. toughness eight for his base profile. Yeah, it's wounded on a six at strength seven, but is that worth the upgrade cost? No, extra wound, not really worth it. You've got the downside of more points for more victory points, more victory points lost. I I can't see where he is worth this at all. I think I think he's four hundred points is massive. It's a huge amount. And feel feel no pain four is very 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 good. Mm. But Korax gets shrouded. Four uh, up. Yeah. Uh what four four, when four he three runs, five? Or no, he gets it. He gets it all the time. No, I think it's just after he's left combat or something. But either either way, as based on him. I don't think it's down, worth though. it. I think a thousand points is, is way too much. Way, way too much. Uh, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll be I'll be wincing at uh, an extra two hundred for him to be mm. honest. But yeah, I just I just don't think it's worth it. There's no point flogging a dead horse. No, is Horus? I think he's good. Take Horus as his stubborn plus one leadership. Three up in Vun is solid. World Breaker is solid, but Horus Ascended is not there. No, just way too much. Way too much yeah. cost. And it's that that is the end of the book, Bill. And that is our Sons of Horus rundown. Hopefully you picked up some stuff as we went through. Phil definitely has picked up some stuff as we went through. Stuff that I've just needed that I've I've Need read. Because yeah. when because when I find a lot of the time when we do these things it helps. Even when I've looked at other legions, understanding them better by having someone that knows them, having new eyes. Yeah, yeah. All the time just helps i really hope it has helped you guys if it has or you've just enjoyed listening to us ramble click like comment and subscribe it will basically help me know that you guys like this sort of stuff so i'll continue making this sort of video and you'll get more of these on the channel if you do that there is also a patreon link there we've got a patreon reward now which is a dice tray and you can just help out with the channel if you would like uh, help get me out of bed in the morning with a coffee. That's it from me. Yeah, and that's it from me. Yeah, with, with, with only barely a prompt. Yeah, and <laughs> but you did a prompt. So we'll see you in a bit. Bye. <laughs>